uh, first beginning, you know, just to understand where we were before the uh, before COVID-19 and after. Uh, of course, we all know that oil prices dipped from close to $64 a barrel to at some point 20 something dollars, $28. Today we're at about $45 or just about $43 to $45. GDP this quarter, Q2, fell to minus 6.1%. Uh, and this is attributable to the lower levels of domestic and international economic recovery. Unemployment uh, was at 27.1% in Q2 2020, underemployment at 28.5%. The forecast is that unemployment will rise to 33.6% in 2020, excluding underemployment. Usually when, on, when our employment figures are, are, are pro produced, is a total of unemployment and underemployment. Uh, but if you just looking at the figures uh, and, and the projections, certainly we are facing uh, very, very difficult times indeed. The exchange rate, as we can see, uh, official exchange rate is somewhere in the region of about uh, 360 to the dollar. The black market is say something like 440 or, or thereabouts. And I think it has fallen in the past few days on account of the uh, interventions with the BDCs, the CBN giving the BDCs some more uh, money. The pressure on the exchange rate, of course, is evident because the CBN has responded during the pandemic by devaluing the Naira by about 20%, uh, while this was in, in, in the past few months. Poverty figures, I'm sure we're all very familiar with this. The total population classified as poor by the MBS is 40%. In absolute numbers, about 92 million people. The rural population classified as poor is 52.1%. And the urban population classified as poor is 18%. I think there's a slide which shows us how badly hit specific sectors of the economy uh, have been. Transportation, for example, is at minus 49%. Uh, hospitality, which is the um, hotels, is minus 40%. Education, minus 24%. Retail and daily shopping is one of the worst hit, with minus 83%. Uh, real estate, minus 22%. Trade, minus 17% and construction minus 40%. I was speaking to, uh, I think it's Transco Hilton, the, one of the directors of the Transco Hilton, who was saying that for the past four months, they've been at about 8% capacity in, in terms of uh, their patronage, just about 8% capacity. So they've had to you know, begin to consider retrenching staff and those kinds of things. Practically every industry has been terribly hit by the pandemic. And we're not here talking about informal workers who, as you know, uh, have also had serious reverses, you know, those who are not generally considered uh, in, these, uh, in, the, in the figures as we, as we present them. So you have, for example, people, you know, uh, in the hospitality industry, you have uh, um, event centers, you have event planners, you have caterers, you, know, you have all manner of people, all supporting that industry, who obviously have little or nothing to do. So in designing the plan, the question that faced us, and this, as you know, was a, uh, a full interministerial team, the question that faced us was what should the quantity or the quantum of the, of the stimulus be? What should it be? So we looked at what if we stuck to our 500 billion, which we already have provided in the budget? What will be the impact of that? What if we were able to find 2.3 trillion, 2 trillion, 2.3 trillion, and, and then 3.6 trillion? So we, look, we, we actually did the financial models of these options to see what impact it would have on GDP growth, what impact it would have on jobs, and, you know, of course, 
on, on the poverty figures also. So without a stimulus, assuming that we just stop with our budget, we would experience in 2020, that's a yearly, the, 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 the overall figure, the, uh, the annual figure of minus 4.40%. With a 500 billion stimulus, that will be down to about minus 1.97%. With 2.3 trillion stimulus, it will be minus 0.59%. And with the 3.6 trillion stimulus, minus 0.42%. But as you can see, even from the figures that we're getting today, these figures may even be somewhat conservative. Because from the, uh, from, from the figures that we're getting in this particular quarter, obviously, you know, we may experience a deeper recession than uh, or it, it, uh, we may experience a deeper fall in GDP than we than we had even projected. It may not be uh, uh, it may not be uh, very much more, but it certainly could be in excess of minus 4.40 percent. So the economic sustainability plan and the programs were designed uh, to do certain things. First, the fiscal measures, as you've seen. Uh, are to safeguard revenues, to reduce non-essential spending. Uh, there were, of course, many monetary policy measures and external support and funding. Then we had to look at tackling vulnerabilities in the health sector. I'm not going to go through all of them because we're mostly familiar with them. Then job intensive interventions, rescuing businesses and repositioning the economy. I want to just talk about the job intensive interventions because the major plan, the major foundation of this plan or the uh, strategy, if you like, is to ensure that this stimulus actually provides jobs, that we're actually able to provide jobs. So the idea was to ensure that in any one of the programs, we have a large number of people employed. So the agriculture program, the mass agriculture program, is one where we envisage that we'll at least be engaging, in, so far, we've enumerated about four million farmers. So these are farmers that are tied to their land. So we, we, have, uh, we have the geo uh, statistics that shows where their land is. So we have about four million. And we expect that with each state, contributing uh, hectare for farming, we'll be able to do you know, significant numbers if already at this stage we're, we're at four million. So the plan, as I said, is to ensure that in each one of these programs, we're engaging as many Nigerians as possible. So the, so the uh, just as I said, the expected outcome for agriculture if, even if each farmer employs an additional person, this will result in an additional 4 million jobs and even more jobs along the value chain. We also would be looking at developing rural roads, which will reduce post-harvest post -harvest losses, then guaranteed offtake of the produce. The way the program is designed is that uh, each, we have some, uh, we have some, if you like, anchor farmers who are, big farmers, and they engage several thousands of other farmers who they, look, they, they ensure that, they, uh, that these farmers have all of their requirements and they guarantee the offtake of their produce. And we've done, uh, they, they, we've done a lot of the service, it's very evident that so long as there is funding, so long as we get the funding from and this funding is meant to come from the CBN, we'll be able to implement this, this program. The same goes for the um, housing program, the mass housing program. The mass housing program is one where we're looking at building 300,000 homes across the country. We are looking at ensuring that the price of those homes does not exceed 2 million naira. We already have models that have been put up in Bono State at the moment by the Family Homes Fund, where uh, the, 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 the figure is about 2 million naira for, the, uh, for this housing. This is the social housing scheme. Now, 
The Federal Ministry of Works and Housing has, there are two tracks to the housing program. There is one which is ongoing with the Federal Ministry of Works and uh, the one under the Family Homes Fund is also supervised by the Federal Ministry of Works. But the strategy is also to ensure that we use local materials as much as possible. So on each site, block making is going on, uh, making of doors, window frames, etc., tiles, etc., going on, on on each of those sites. The whole idea is to make sure that we patronize local industry and that we engage uh, uh, all of these young men and women who, at the moment, are out of work. One of the uh, critical success uh, indicators for us will be the number of young engineers, builders, who are engaged in this housing project. And so we're opening up the space for them and ensuring that they're able to bid for the job so that this job is not going to, con to big contractors who uh, will, take up, will take it all up. So there will be some uh, uh, big contractors who are supervising the, uh, the smaller businesses and smaller builders. But, they, but we, we expect that if, uh, again, uh, we, we, we are looking at funding uh, from the structured loans of the CBN, and the expected funding here is about 217 billion. Uh, the, we look at the demand, 1.5 million doors, 1.8 million windows, 7.8 million hinges, uh, for 300,000 homes. I mean, this is huge by any standards. And if we're able to focus on local industry, we can actually start uh, a major revolution in building uh, in, in, in our own country and patronize local industry and ensure that uh, our people get the jobs and the experience that, uh, that they require. So that's for mass housing. We also have the solar power strategy uh, the solar power strategy is also focused on creating jobs. What, what has happened with the solar power in our country, of course, is that for those, of, uh, for those who have been following, in the past few years, we've been able to demonstrate that if um, we allow the private sector, we enable the private sector to, uh, to install solar power in homes, and uh, in businesses, government itself does not have to worry about any of these things. And we don't even have to, I mean, we, uh, unlike what we're experiencing today, when whatever happens in the power sector almost invariably becomes a problem of the government. What we've seen with the installation of uh, solar home systems all over the country is that the private sector is well able to not only install this, but also set in, put in place payment systems, and people are willing to pay. As a matter of fact, when you look at the tariffs in some of these places, the tariffs are almost invariably higher than even uh, the, the, the tariffs that are paid for power supply from the grid. But people are prepared to pay because the power is constant. The power is 24 hour supply, and they are happy with uh, the supply of the power. People are very happy to pay. So if you look at the projects that we've done in, uh, in our area market, for example, or Sabongari in Kano, where these solar systems have been installed in shops and uh, in, in other establishments, there has been no default in payment. The private sector people who put these solar systems there receive their pay constantly. There is no problem whatsoever. Nobody is arguing about tariffs of any kind. So it's very obvious. And in Sokoto also, we have a project in Torankawa, a village, where people are happy to pay their tariffs and jobs are created. The installers, those who are servicing the solar systems, those who are running the payment systems, these are jobs for, you know, uh, these are jobs for so many Nigerians. And people in all of these places are prepared to pay. So, so using that same strategy, we'll be enabling uh, about 5 million solar home systems to be installed across, uh, across the country. 
Now, gov what government will do, of course, is uh, to provide the loans through, again, a CBN-supported uh, structured loan to the manufacturers and, uh, and uh, to the manufacturers of these solar home systems. Many of them, of course, are assembled locally, and we're already working uh, with these uh, with these uh, uh, producers or uh, providers of this facility. And one other point is that the World Bank is working closely with us on this and supporting this, this, this scheme so that we expect that uh, once we're able to get fully out there, uh, we should be able to provide, uh, if we do all of the 5 million homes, 250,000 new jobs in low and high skill categories and 25 million individuals with new or improved access to electricity, and we're looking at uh, five uh, persons per home, five individuals per home. Again, the expected funding is from the CBN structured loans. Then we have the MSME support, uh, which is a survival. There are so many aspects of that. But the survival fund, uh, which the president spoke about in his speech, is a payroll support and guaranteed offtake. And then registration of new businesses, and uh, the guaranteed offtake of products will support continued production of priority items and benefit 100,000 SMEs and sustain 300,000 jobs. I think that the, this, uh, the MSME support and support for businesses is particularly important because we're looking at support for MSMEs, payroll support. This will include uh, private schools, payment to teachers of private schools, private businesses across the country. And this is in the form of payroll support for three months, for a three month period, just to ensure that people do not lose their jobs. Now, the, we also expect that the MSME support will be one that will enable industries like uh, um, the hospitality industries, especially the lower cater, to benefit. And uh, I'm sure that the Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment in the breakout sessions will give us uh, greater details about that. But these are very important aspects of, of, the, of the plan. Now, I want to just mention, uh, especially with respect to the financing of, this, uh, of the plan, and this is a very critical part of, of, of the whole issue. Now, if you look at uh, the financing, I don't know whether we can get onto that slide so that we see how The total stimulus package is 2.3 trillion, but 1.3 trillion of that is from funds which are supposed to be in the form of structured loans from the CBN. So if that fails, if the 1.3 trillion structured loans from the CBN fails, then, the, then essentially we'll be unable to achieve our objectives because this is the loan that's expected to go to agriculture, it's the loan that's expected to go for the mass housing, for the MSME support, and then the solar uh, home systems. So if these loans from the CBM for some reason do not come, then we are certainly in trouble, which is why you know, uh, it's crucial for us to work closely, and we've been doing so, uh, to ensure that there are no obstacles uh, to these loans are coming in. As you can see from, uh, I'm not so sure whether we're on that slide, I think it's slide 23. Uh, agriculture is about 637 billion to provide 5 million jobs. Solar, <clears throat> 152 billion, 152.4. Uh, and then mass housing, 217.3 billion. Public works, uh, the 774,000 jobs program and SMEs to support 500,000 jobs in all. That's 100 billion. Uh, I think that if we are able to implement uh, these faithfully, if we are able to, uh, especially,
to ensure that we, we bring in the resources necessary, we certainly will be able to turn around the economic fortunes of Nigeria. The truth is that if you look at stimulus packages all over the world, you know, what has happened is that in many economies that have been able to dent the impact of COVID-19, the funds have been provided. And they have been provided at great pains, naturally. I mean, the, the US, for example, providing almost three trillion now, you know, at some point, it would have been inconceivable that the US will spend that kind of, especially under a Republican government and all their tight fiscals and all that. It would have been inconceivable. But everybody recognizes that the only way out of this particular problem is to ensure that we fund productivity, fund production, enable consumer spending so that people can actually go out and buy things. And we have to put money into people's hands. Of course, an important aspect of this is also the social investment program. You know, and the president, as you know, has ordered that uh, that program be ex ex extended by about one million new beneficiaries. You know, that is also important. But unfortunately, it appears that uh, the NPAR program, you know, uh, has is making provision now for 400,000 people. I certainly think that we must look for ways of ensuring that we're able to provide for a minimum, in my own opinion, a minimum of 700,000 Nigerians, young men and women. We're going to be paying them Naira, we're not paying them. Uh, so so I, I think that this is very crucial. If we reduce the number at all, then that will, be, that, that, that will really be terrible because this is the time to increase the numbers. And I hope that um, we'll be able to work that out. I, I know that discussions are already going on, on trying to see a way to improve the numbers of uh, those who are engaged. I, I think I'll just leave it at that so that um, I would not uh, take any longer. I think uh, the last point I'd like to make is that this is everything that we're doing has to be done immediately. We're already in day 67 since the plan. We're already in day 67. Nothing is going to happen by magic. We have to simply do this stuff. We've got to ensure that we have the money. I've got to ensure that day by day, we are measuring our achievements and trying to ensure that we do the things that we need to do. And um, they, 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 we simply are, we're, we're not favored at all by time. Every single day, the poverty situation and the economic distortions deepen. Thank you very much. Thank you, Your Excellency, the Vice President.